Hi everybody and welcome to a new video in the Deep Learning for Audio with Python series. This time we're gonna start our projects building a music genre classifier. Uh, what we're gonna do today really is uh, preparing. Uh, it's basically like doing some pre-processing on a music data set. So what we want to do really is extract the inputs and the targets. So basically like the uh, labels and the MFCCs uh, from a music data set and store that in a JSON file so that then we can use it when we actually train our neural network. So first of all, what we need for a music genre classifier is a music data set and uh, Luckily, there's a great one on the Marseilles uh, website where we have this uh, data set for genre classification. So you can go to the website and download it here. I'm not gonna do that because I already have it, but uh, don't worry, I'm just gonna leave the um, a link in the description below so you can uh, have access to the data set. Cool, so let's take a look at the website, uh, at the <laughs> data set. So it's divided into like 10 different uh, folders and each folder is basically a different musical genre. So we have blues, classical, rock, reggae, like all sorts of genres. And inside each um, genre folder, we have a hundred uh, different songs. But these are not like full songs. It's just like 30 seconds worth of song. That's, I guess, like because of like copyright uh, issues. So we're gonna work with this for our music genre classifier. Cool. So now let's go uh, and start uh, building uh, like the, this preprocessor, right? Okay, so what we want to do really is to define a high level function that we'll call save MFCC, right? And uh, so here we're gonna have a bunch of different arguments. So first of all, we want the dataset path. Then we want the JSON, oops, not capital J, JSON uh, path. So dataset path being obviously the, the path of the, of the dataset itself, JSON path being the path of the JSON file where we want to store like all the MFCCs and the labels, right? Okay, so dataset path, JSON path, and then we need to pass in a lot of like values which are relative like to, to uh, the MFCC feature uh, itself. So we're, we're gonna do a number of MFCCs and we'll default this to 13, then we'll do a number, uh, oh yeah, let's do number FFT, and this is like the interval in number of samples that we are considering for our Fourier transforms, and here we'll default this to 2048. Then we'll have the hop length, and we'll default this to 512. Now, if you don't know what these things are, don't worry, because I have a couple of videos where I both explain the the theory and uh, the implementation like of these things, like in Librosa, which by the way, uh, is the library, audio library that we're gonna use also like today. Uh, cool. Okay, so beyond this, we want also another uh, argument and we can call this num number of segments. And yeah, let's default this to, to five, for example. Uh, okay, so why do we need number of segments? Well, it turns out that for uh, training deep learning models, you need a lot of data. So if you consider that here we only have a hundred data points really, and so it's a hundred tracks per genre, that isn't really much. So what we wanna do is just like chop up the each track into like a number of different segments. And then instead of like saving uh, like the inputs as like tracks, saving them like as different segments, right? So that we're gonna have like many more uh, like input data. Cool. Uh, okay, so this is like the, the the high level like function. So now we need to like start uh, writing uh, like what we need here. So the the first thing that we want to do is to build a dictionary dictionary to store uh, data. Right, and so we'll call this <laughs> not surprisingly data, and uh, here we're gonna have a bunch of things. So if the first one is mapping and it's gonna be an array, then we'll have, oops, sorry, 
this is not correct. Here we go. So mapping, then we'll have the MFCC, and then we'll have the uh, labels down here. So what are all of these things, right? Okay, so mappings, uh, we need a way of mapping uh, the different uh, like genres, genre labels uh, onto numbers. And so we're gonna use a list uh, for doing that. So say for example, we have this classical and uh, blue blues, right? So we are basically mapping classical to zero, which is the index of the list uh, it belongs to and blues uh, to one. Then here we're going to have like the MFCCs. And so basically we're going to have the MFCC, MFCC vectors for each of the uh, segments. And so we're going to have, say we have like three uh, segments, for example, here. So I'm not going to uh, fill this in, but uh, you get the idea, right? Uh, we'll see this like uh, then in action. And then we have the, the labels down here. And the labels are going to be, for example, 0, 0, and 1. So the MFCCs uh, are itself the training data, so the, the training inputs. The labels are the, the outputs or the, the targets that we expect. So here, basically, we're saying that's for this MFCC uh, vector here, for this segment here, we, we expect this label, zero, which is classical. Uh, same thing like for like the the this like second segment over here we expect zero which is classical and here uh, for the third segment over here we expect one which is a blues right so see, so this is like a nice way of storing uh, like information that we can use for training purposes right but now obviously we don't need any of this we just need the the schema uh, overall and we're gonna just like then fill it in while we analyze stuff. So let's go and analyze things. Right, so what we want to do, first of all, is we want to loop through all the uh, genres, right? So basically what I'm, what I'm saying here is that if we go back here, so this is our data set. So what we want to do is like loop through all of these folders and then analyze like this uh, uh, songs like one uh, by one. Cool. So how do we do that? Well, turns out it's quite simple. If you have a, uh, if you rely on a um, function on a method that's in the OS uh, module and the the method is called walk. So we'll do a for and we'll say here dear path, dear names and file names in we'll do os.walk and we'll pass in the dataset path. Okay, so what's this? So the dear path is the current uh, folder, is the path to the folder we are currently in. The dear names are all the names of the subfolders in the dear path uh, in the dear path folder, and the file names are all the files that we have in dear path, right? So this is like very very useful because then we can uh, recursively going through. Uh, all of our folders, all of our data sets recursively. And, and to do that, we just use the, this os.walk uh, utility method, which is quite cool. Okay, but uh, we just don't want this information. We also want the count here. And the count is needed because we're going to use it for, la for like these labels here. So uh, let's do that. So if we want also like the count, which is basically the number of um, uh, number of iterations we are currently in, we want to use uh, enumerate. So we want to enumerate this os.walk in dataset, uh, dataset path, and this will unpack this value, uh, giving us like the, the count, the current loop, uh, current iteration we are in, plus their path, their names, and, and file names. Cool. Okay, so, uh, what we want to do here, first of all, is we want to ensure uh, that uh, we are uh, not uh, at the root level. 
So we are not at the at, at the data set level, uh, right? So because we want to go through all the, the folders, uh, subfolders here, like blues, classical, but os.walk uh, will give us as during the first iteration, uh, data set path itself, right? So it, it'll give us in their path, data set path. And we, we don't want that because like we don't, we don't need it, right? And so we want to ensure that we are at the genre level, right? At the genre subfolders. And so for doing that, we'll do if, um, we'll do dear path uh, is not a data set path. And then he'll, we'll write uh, like our magic, right? Okay. so. Now, let me do just like a thing here. Uh, so let me just write the data set path here, like as a constant. And here we have, uh, I created a reduced version of the uh, Marseilles data set, which has only one song per genre. And I've done that because like, it's going to be like way faster uh, to, to process everything. But then you can, you should use here, like the, the path to the, the Marseilles data set, right? To the full one. So, and here we put the JSON path and here I'm going to put in, yeah, let's say data.json, right? And obviously here, uh, I'm, I'll be saving stuff like in the, in the current, uh, like a working folder. Right. Okay. So let's go back here. So we can say, uh, so here, uh, now what we, uh, want to do is to, first of all, uh, like save, uh, the, uh, semantic, uh, label. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, I want to save in mappings over here. Uh, I want to save things like uh, classical, for example, right? Or at the next iteration, blues, right? So how do we do that? Well, so we know that uh, dear path, uh, dear path uh, is the, uh, gives us like the, the path of the uh, current uh, directory. So uh, in our case, uh, what we're looking at is we want to take their path and we want to cr pass from the their path to its components. So how do we do that? Well, we do a their, uh, their path dot, uh, we're going to split it and we're going to split it uh, based on the uh, slash. So this basically means that if we have a dear path, uh, which is, for example, genre slash uh, blues, this is going to give us, <laughs> right? This is going to give us a list uh, where we have a genre and blues. Right now, we are interested in a this semantic label, so blues for our mapping, and so we could isolate the semantic uh, uh, label, doing a dear path components, and considering only the last uh, the value like for the last index, which is basically this blues here. Nice. So now we have the semantic label. So what we want to do is to ap append it to the mapping. So we'll do a data uh, mapping dot uh, append and we'll append the uh, semantic label. Nice. So this is like the, the first path and the first thing, the first step, right? So now what we want to do next is we want to go through all the files in the current dear path, in the current uh, genre folder. So for doing that, uh, we, so, well, first of all, like, let's comment this. So let's say process uh, files for a specific uh, genre. Okay, so uh, we'll do a for loop. And so we'll do a for f in file names and here 
we are we so first of all we need to uh, get the file path right because the file name itself so this f gives us just like the the name of the file it's not the full path and so we actually need the full path for loading the <clears throat> uh, for, for loading the audio file, right? And so for uh, arriving at the file path, we'll do an os.path.join uh, and we'll pass in uh, initially the dir path and the file name, which is f, right? So why do we want to do that? Well, because we want to load the audio file. So now we have the, 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 the file path. And the next thing for loading the audio file is importing Librosa. So uh, in the previous video, I showed how to use Librosa, which is this great uh, audio uh, like processing uh, library. So if you don't know, uh, like if you haven't watched the video, just like go back because there like that's quite uh, detail about how to do a bunch of stuff with Librosa. But uh, let's go back here. So now what we want to do is load this file. And so we are going to have the signal and the uh, sample rate. And uh, here we'll do a Librosa dot uh, load. And we need to pass the file and we'll pass the file path. And then we'll need to specify the uh, sample rate and uh, let's assume that we have a constant here for the sample rate okay and so we'll put it over here and so we'll say sample uh, rate is equal to uh, 22,050 uh, which is a customary uh, value for sample rates when we do music processing okay and so now we've uh, loaded the uh, audio file. Okay, but now we can't just analyze and extract the MFCCs like at this level because uh, we want to like analyze and extract MFCCs at the level of the segments, right? And so now we need to like divide like this signal into a bunch of different uh, segments. And so what we need to do here is to process uh, segments extracting MFCC and uh, storing, uh, yeah, the data, right? Uh, and yeah, storing data, process segments extracting and storing data, yes. Okay, so what we'll do here is another for loop, nested loop. And so here we'll do for S in a range uh, number of segments. And so we're going through like all the segments. And here, what we want to do is to uh, have a, for each segment, we need a, a start uh, sample in the signal and we need a um, finish sample, right? Okay, and so the, the start sample is going to be given by, and uh, <laughs> bear a second uh, with me because this is going to be a little bit like convoluted. So here we want the number uh, of uh, samples per segment multiplied uh, by S which is like the, the current segment uh, we are in. And now the finish sample is gonna be the start sample plus the number of samples per uh, segment. Okay, so uh, l let's move on and then I'll create, uh, I'll derive like this variable here. S cool. So basically what we wanna do here is to get the MSCCs and for doing that we'll do a Librosa dot uh, feature dot MFCC and here we need to pass the signal in but here you'll see that we'll we, we don't want to analyze the whole signal but we want to analyze a slice of that and so the slice is going to be between the start sample and uh, the finish sample right 
and then we need to pass in the uh, sample rate and the sample rate is going to be equal to SR and then we want to pass in all of these values here, right? So the number of MFCCs, the number, uh, the interval uh, that we are considering for the Fourier transfer and the hop length, the sliding window. Uh, right, and so we'll do an NFFT is equal to NFFT. Then we'll do a um, N MFCC is equal to NMFCC over here. And then we'll do a hop length, which is again equal to hop length. And these are all values that we got from uh, the arguments of the, of the function itself, right? Cool. Okay. So now, as you can see here, we we are just analyzing a, a slice of the signal which is the slice which is relevant for the current segment and so for the start sample and the finish sample as we said we need the overall number of samples per uh, segment so let's calculate this and we given like this is like a something that remains like unchanged throughout so we could um calculate that in here and so the overall number of samples per segment is given by the number, uh, so it's samples per track divided by the number of segments, right? So now this samples per track is the overall number of samples in a, in a, in a track, in a sample, right? Uh, and we can do, we should do like a, an int uh, of this. So we are casting this like to int, right? Okay, so obviously we don't have this samples per track and this is a constant and we need to like create it over here. So, and the samples per track is given by the sample rate multiplied by the duration, right? And we know that with the Marseilles data set, the duration is a 30 and it's given uh, in uh, seconds, right? So, okay, so let's recap this because this was quite, quite the jump, right? Okay, so we have the sample rate, which is 22,050. The duration uh, of each um, audio file is 30 seconds. So the overall number of samples per track is given by the sample rate multiplied by uh, the duration, right? Now, uh, we're interested in the number of samples for each segment. And this is obviously given by the overall number of samples per track divided by the number of segments, right? And now, when we go down here, the start sample for each sample, uh, for, sorry, for each segment, for each song, is given by the number of samples per segment multiplied by uh, the, the, the current segment we are in. Okay, so uh, let's, for uh, S equal to zero, for example, so we are basically at the, at the first segment, this is equal to, to zero, right? Yeah, because we are starting at zero. And here, the, the finished sample for S equal to zero is, as we expect, equal to the number of samples per, per segment, right? Because we are doing like a whole uh, interval, which is like the whole number of samples per segment. And then we just like slide and add uh, like, we just like slide to the right, adding the number of samples per segment for each um, uh, segment we are calculating. Right, okay. So now we have the MFCC, but we need to do one thing, which is MFCC.t. So we, we want just like to, the transpose uh, like of this, because like it's gonna be like, uh, yeah, nicer to work with this. Now, uh, there's one thing that we would, uh, would need to specify here. So sometimes it turns out that uh, the uh, audio files don't have, yeah, 
the the expected like an uh, overall like number of samples because like the duration is slightly like more or less like that w what we would expect which basically means that when we do like the mfcc we may have like more uh, vectors more or less vectors like than expected and we don't want to uh, include those like in our data set because when we pass uh, like this MFCCs as training data, we need uh, like for the training data to have all the same shape, right? And we need to ensure that we have like the same number of uh, MFCCs vectors for each segment, okay? And so what we want to do here is we want to first of all calculate the expected number MFCC vectors per <laughs> segment, right? So this is a ridiculously long <laughs> variable, but I hope it's quite clear, right? And so in this case, uh, this this value is given by the number of uh, samples per segment and uh it's divided by the hop length so now i'm not gonna explain like into the details why this is the case and but like if you go back uh, to my video like on the fourier transform and on the mfccs you'll understand why that's the case but that's because like we are doing uh uh, like many we are calculating the mfccs basically like at each hop length and so like when we uh want to have like the overall expected number of mfcc vectors per segment we need, just need to get all the number of samples per segment and divide it by like the the hop length but now this number uh could uh potentially be a value of like a float like this, right? 1.2, for example, right? Uh, but uh, what we actually want to do is around uh, the number like to the higher integer there, like in this case, like two. And so for doing that, what we want to do is import the math uh, module and uh, use a nice function here that's called seal. So we'll seal this value and which basically means is if we ever get like something like 1.2, this value is going to be uh, 2. And this is like how the MFCC like itself work, right? Um, okay, so now let's take like this monster <laughs> variable here and let's specify here that here we want to uh, let's write the comment first. So we want to store uh, MFCC for segment if it has the expected uh, length. We could put, put it like this, right? And so we can say, um, so if Uh, and so here we should say if the length of the MFCC is equal to this expected, then we can do some stuff. But now, obviously, we need to have like this MFCC value over here. Uh, in order to uh, like do some logic with it. So we need just like, to, to, to bring that up. And so here we'll store uh, like these values only if like the, the, we have like the expected number of like MFCC vectors in each segment, right? Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we should do, <clears throat> so we, here we should take the data and we'll take the MSCC and we'll do a, an append and we'll pass in the 
uh, MFCC. But now we can just pass in the MFCC because this is a, this is a NumPy array, and we need to uh, like cast that to a list because otherwise we're not going to be able to save it uh, as a JSON file. And uh, then we also want to save the labels. So data labels and here append. And here the labels is going to be i minus 1. So do you guys remember i? And it was over here. And this is like why we use enumerate like in the first place, right? Because at each iteration, we are in a uh, different uh, genre folder, like at this like higher level, right? And so we can associate uh, a value which is equal like to the count of the iterations we are in to each genre. But remember, the first iteration was for the, the, the data set path itself. So we're ignoring that. So that's why we, we need to... Uh, um, do like a subtraction with minus one, right? Okay, and so by doing this, what we are doing is storing the MFCC and labels for each uh, segment, which is great. And uh, if, you, if we look at this, basically here, uh, at the end of this uh, quite big uh, like for loop with many nested loops, we are basically going to have like the the mappings, so we're going to have like all the genre uh, uh, labels here in the mapping. Then we are going to have like this MFCCs for each segment and the labels for each uh, segment as a number, right? Uh, cool. Okay, so what what I want to do here uh, is to do a print, and so we can do a print like this, and we could say. Um, yeah, we could just like put the, the file name here and uh, we'll put the, the segment here and uh, here we'll do a dot format and um, here this, this should be F, the, the name like or the well, we could put in like file path, right? So it's the whole file path and then here we'll also like specify which segment we are processing. Cool. And then I wanted to do like also like another print uh, at this level here. So here, if you guys remember, we are at the level of the of the genre of the folder. And so uh, here we could do a uh, print where we say, uh, sorry, we, we do a new line and then we say uh, processing and we'll pass in uh, the semantic label. So here we'll, we'll get like processing blues, processing classical. So just like to, to keep track of this when we are <laughs> running the script, right? Okay, so now we have uh, all we need uh, uh, to store like all the, the training data in our dictionary. Now the next step and the final step, uh, it's that of saving everything as a uh, as a JSON file. So what we'll do here is with, we'll do uh, an open and here we'll pass in the JSON path and we'll uh, open like this file to, to write, basically like to create this file and we'll do an as FP. And now here, what we want to do is a json dot uh, dump now we don't have json here and uh, we need to import it so we'll do an import json there okay so we'll do json uh, uh, dot uh, dump and then we'll pass in uh, the data so the, our dictionary then uh, we'll say that we want to like write the dictionary here, like in this file, and then we'll pass in a nice um, argument, which is the indent. So we want to like the, do like a, a for indent, uh, like for each thing that we are writing like to this file, so that it becomes like more readable. Nice. So now we have like the whole the whole function that's going to be able like to to save everything. 
So what remains to do is just that to run it. So we'll do as usual and if name is equal to main then we'll do a save mfcc and then we'll pass in uh, the data set path but not this one we'll pass in this and we'll pass in the the json path and now let's say that we're gonna have i don't know yeah we, we could say like 10 segments for example right uh okay so now everything should be in place and now let's see if this works so if there are no mistakes so yeah it's working nice and so we basically went through all the different genres so we processed uh disco and as you can see here we we got like this file and we segmented it into uh, like 10 different segments. Well, there's a there's a minor mistake here. So it says segment 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, so to avoid having that and, and starting from 1, we'll do here in the sprint an S plus 1. But for the rest, like it's all good. So as you can see here, so then we're processing reggae, rock, pop. Okay, so now let's take a look at the result of this so for doing that, uh, we'll see that here in our current uh, working uh, directory, uh, we have this data.json, which is like this new file that we've just built. And let's take a look at it. Nice. Okay. So And as you can see here, we have the mapping and the mapping is given by these guys, so disco, reggae, rock, and as I said, disco is going to be equal to zero, reggae equal to one, and so on and so forth. Then we have MFCCs, and we have like a bunch of values down here. And then, uh, as you can see, down here, we should have like all the labels. And the labels are correct, because we expect uh, 10 zeros, then 10 ones, 10 twos, and so on and so forth. Cool. This is great news because now we have our JSON file uh, with all the, uh, <laughs> all the training data. So next time we are gonna use like this uh, training data and we're gonna build our network, our music genre classifier. And we start with, a, with an MLP, so a multi-layer perception. And then down the line, we'll like, upgrade that to a convolutional neural network. But uh, this is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the video. If that's the case, please remember to subscribe and definitely hit the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.